from past three years. Uh, my roles and responsibilities in my current team is uh, right from the uh, gathering the comments from the clients uh, to the development of that application. Uh, plus, I'm also uh, you know supporting the application which I have developed and uh, for the enhancement purpose, I'm also uh, giving the uh, support to that application. Uh, talking about my tech stack, my tech stack include basic Core Java, Spring Boot, Hibernate, and MySQL as a backend database. Yeah. How much experience you have? Uh, three years. Okay. So you basically worked as backend developer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you aware of Java eight? Yes. So what are the features you came across Java eight? Uh, so the important features which Java eight provides are. Uh, lambda lambda expression uh, method difference static and default methods in an uh, interface and uh, functional interface and uh, daytime api uh, yeah this much yeah. okay so could you please tell me what is functional interface yeah sure uh, yeah. functional interface is an interface in which only a single abstract method is there and any number of default and static method can be there Okay, so how many types of functional interfaces Okay, uh, in Java 8, uh, the predefined in, uh, functional interfaces are uh, producer, consumer, and predicate. Uh, basics are these. Okay, no, so I'm asking like method declaration. So when we are declaring the functional interface, uh -huh. we can define of two types, right? What are those? So, sorry, come again. We can define in two ways, right? The functional interface. Function. You aware of uh, default or static? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like functional yeah, interface, basically, those? it uh, uh, functional interface in my if I'm annotating that interface with the uh, at the rate functional interface, uh, strictly it will ha should have only single abstract method. Uh, public abstract uh, something void or written integer and uh, it should have it can have any number of default and static method okay so uh, okay fine so uh, in function what is the difference between map and flat map map and okay. flat map yeah uh, basically map works on a you can say single uh, list or single uh, collection uh, but flat map can work on uh, more than one if it combines two list or two collection object and can perform operation on that and basically map is used to have the uh, you know uh, if I want to have operation on each object of that uh, collection interface collection class list or so so in that case we should use map uh, okay so so while talking about the Java 8, we have optionals in that. So yes, yes. what are those? The optional class was include, uh, included in Java 8. So it basically used, it is used basically to, uh, you know, uh, avoid the null pointer ex exception. And suppose I'm... Um, in generics optional in generics uh, i can have a list of integer so if any null pointer occurs so optional class can handle that it is to avoid that null yeah. exception okay yeah. you know about method referencing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so method reference is like uh, i can have a um, Suppose, suppose I'm having a functional interface and in that it is a static method. So I can directly call that uh, class name colon colon its method name. Uh, instead of the lambda expression, I can also call using uh, static uh, method difference. Okay, so how we'll send the that? So for example, if you want to have a... Um, so generalizing means... Uh, Suppose I'm having a functional interface, and in that interface, uh, suppose the internal class, yeah. system.out.println class. 
so in that print ln is a static method uh, which is overloaded so in that case we can use system dot out colon colon print ln it will internally uh, invoke the same method the overloaded method it, whether it will be string integer or anything so directly we can invoke that method print ln method So in about talking about Java, so how you will uh, handle the exceptions? Uh, yeah, we can handle exception using try catch block, and uh, we have to put all the risky code in that try block, and uh, the respective exceptions which can be occurred, we will be handling in the except uh, catch block, and uh, the uh, yeah means the child class should be up and the parent reference should be you know later part. The hierarchy oh. of that exception, catching the exception. Okay, fine. Okay. So, okay. Uh, fine. So, uh, uh, what is concurrent modification exception? Concurrent modification exception. Yeah. Uh, concurrent modification exception occurs when we are, you know, iterating the list and uh, simultaneously we are modifying that collection object. So, in that case, concurrent modification exception occurs. Uh, we can resolve that like uh, mm, we can use resolve that using iterator like uh, I can have the list dot iterator and I can iterate through that iterator and uh, or else we can have a, a concurrent uh, what we say concurrency part of that collection object uh, suppose for array list there is a array uh, on co copy write array list and for set same uh, er copy on write set so we can have concurrent method for the okay yeah method. i got it got it yeah fine okay uh you worked on spring boot also right yes yes i have worked on yeah. so what's the difference between spring boot and spring yeah basically the difference the basic difference is uh, in spring we have to configure a lot of things uh, for for an instance say like for database connection only we have to uh, provide the multiple classes and xml files uh, but in spring boot we can simply provide all those uh, configuration in application dot properties file and it will bootstrap our application and less manageable code will be there we do have only to focus upon uh, the development part the business logic part not on the configuration part yeah okay yeah fine so uh, what are the basic dependencies that we had for the spring boot yeah basic dependency like parent dependency is uh, parent yeah yeah parent dependencies yeah yeah spring means uh, spring like uh, there are some things that will make spring boot separate from spring right so there are some dependencies that we are so what are those yeah the basic dependency the parent dependency is spring boot starter and uh, the uh -huh. other than that if i'm creating the rest api so i'll be including uh, web web uh, that one like starter web spring boot starter web and uh, other than okay. that you can use okay. uh, yeah more over less okay so could you explain like at the rate spring boot application there's an annotation what that annotation will do yeah spring boot application right uh, it is yeah, a, yeah. it is the main uh, like uh, main uh, annotation uh, present in the main class the main the main method so it it consists of uh, uh, three three annotation a uh, spring boot configuration uh, enable auto configuration and component scan so the, okay. it, will, it will internally uh, auto configure all the parts okay so if we want to exclude any of the pre uh, predefined dependencies like by the spring and i don't want uh, those things hmm. so how i will yeah, remove can, those yeah, you can simply uh, uh, annotate the main class using component scan and we can have exclude uh, parameter in that so by excluding that type of classes we can uh, have that okay fine mm, okay uh, so what, what other annotations you have used in your spring boot application uh, other an annotations like uh, for rest controller i have used at the rate rest controller at the rate service at the rate repository 
for same like service class at the rate service for repository interface at the repository apart from that in uh, our entity class at the rate entity at the rate table id uh, generated value getters and setters and uh, we can say uh, yeah at the rate get annotation post put these annotations i have used here okay fine okay so talking about spring boot uh, uh Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what is at the rate qualifier will do? At the rate qualifier. Okay. Uh, yeah. This mm -hmm. this annotation is used uh, when we have a uh, like I say ambiguity in the bean configuration. Okay. So suppose I am having the same bean uh, and I want to have that uh, name for that particular bean. So I can have qualifier and name and alias something like that. So uh, I can that have. Okay. That uh so to identify different bean based on their name so we can have qualify in that yeah. okay fine mm, okay so like there is a scenario like i have one two interfaces okay okay like interface a and interface b and uh, okay. we have like one class and that class is implementing two interfaces okay 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 so both the interfaces are having some common method like get data and uh, i want to execute that get data in, in that particular class so how will know like which get data will be executed interface a or interface b okay. so in both interface a and b uh, there is a common method get data right Yes. It's it's, a, it's yes. a static method or normal abstract method. It's a normal method. No means definition is there in both the okay. interfaces. Yes. Okay. And uh, interface. See, like you have given some implementation, okay? For particular uh, interface method, yeah. but which interface method will be called? How I will know? Class A or Class B? Uh, like, yeah, if both interface is having their own method, suppose get data, get data, and will be implementing uh -huh. that interface, we'll also have the implementation of that method in the implementation uh -huh. class. So that uh -huh. implementation will uh, execute. So how how I will know like which implementation we are calling? We we just call the get data, right? The other execution will happen in that method. Suppose uh, interface A is printing uh, good morning and uh, interface B is printing good night. Okay, in the get data. Okay. So how I will make sure like it is printing get data like good morning or it is printing good night. Yeah, we'll I I am that. just calling get data right. Yeah yeah. We can have interface dot interface name dot a uh, method name. So accordingly, that implementation will be uh, running. Interface name dot super dot method name or interface name dot method name. Uh, interface name dot uh, okay. In that case, if you are using that, okay. <laughs> Yeah, with with super super keyword we'll be using. Yes. With super. Okay. With super. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Yeah. So, you worked in REST API also? Yeah, yeah, I have hands on on that. Yeah. So, uh, what is difference in SOAP and REST? Okay, SOAP and REST. uh yes uh, so basically can be uh, like data consuming and producing part is done using xml only but in rest apis we have the authority we can have uh, you know xml also json also and other data type also we can produce and consume the same but we have the constraint over soap like it will only accept or produce xmls Basic advantage is this. What does two hundred status mean? Two uh, hundred is okay, like accepted. Four not four not three. 
फोर नॉट थ्री फोर नॉट थ्री मीन्स आई एम नॉट श्योर आई एम नॉट श्योर आई थिंक नॉट क्रिएटेड फोर नॉट थ्री सॉरी आई एम नॉट अवेयर ऑफ दिस मेथड्स एच टी डी पी रिटर्न टाइप सॉरी सॉरी डोंट नो दैट फोर नॉट वन और फोर नॉट थ्री Okay, fine. No, no issues. So, uh, have you heard about at the rate controller advice? Yes. Controller advice. Um, uh huh. No, no. Okay. So, I think I think uh, you know. Okay. You have you worked on uh, Angular also? Any of the front end projects? Uh, um. Moreover, I was you know involved into back end part, but for front end part, I have. Uh, exposure to okay, fine. HTML and CSS type oh, things. And okay, fine, fine, fine. So, any of the DevOps for functionality, you know? Uh, yeah, I have worked on uh, that uh, Jenkins part. Jenkins and Sonar. Jenkins part. Sonar okay. Pipeline, pipeline. Like basic understanding okay. of what, how, how is pipeline. So pipeline you have Git also? Uh, we are using SVN. Sorry? SVN. We are using no. SVN. Selenium, SVN, uh, Subversion Network. Okay, okay, SVN, SVN. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you haven't moved to Git yet. Uh, no, no, we are still using SVN. Ah, uh, okay, fine. In future, we'll be working like we are uh, migrating to microservices. So in that case, we will be moving to GitLab. Git. Uh huh. Okay. So. Uh, Uh, how how you will do the deployment through Jenkins? As uh, you are using SVN and Jenkins also, so you must be using CI/CD pipelines, right? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, the thing is, uh, we are currently moving like uh, the legacy project which uh, I was developing. Uh, it was normally like uh, we create the war from the uh, that uh, Eclipse and directly deploy that war to our uh, Whitefly server. okay but now now the the comment came from our client like we have to move to microservices and uh, one by one we will be uh, you know migrating the microservices so for that part i have used jenkins like uh, how the pipelines are created we have to specify this uh, the uh, suppose this i have to mac with our uh, svn repository and if any changes occurs to that svn repository my jenkins pipeline will uh, you know track that change and if that any change occurs so that project will be uh, like i i am specifying some parameters like uh, war creation file uh, war creation command some java c dash uh, p i think some 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 uh, command we give and accordingly those war ah, okay created. okay fine so that some some what i do fine 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 okay so i think i am done from my side so Do you have any questions?